Hi, welcome back. This is Keith and this is part two of two of spot checking my test equipment and um, in the part one we talked about how to figure out calculate the tolerance of the equipment compare that to the to the tolerance of the um, calibration source in this case the DMM check plus and then figure out if the DMM check plus was accurate enough to actually use uh, to calibrate or spot check the equipment. But so if you haven't seen that and you, you don't know how uh, to figure that out, then go back and look at part one again. Uh, but part two, we're going to do it. It should be short and sweet and action packed. <laughs> uh, so let's, uh, let's dig in. So here's my equipment. This is, I'll, I'll try not to block things too much. This is the Echo DMM, DMM Check Plus. And we're gonna start with measuring the DC voltage. So we put the leads here. And it measures 4.997, and that's that's a slow, so not a fast measure. Four, we're doing seven and eight. Uh, the calculated tolerance of the meter in the in the DC mode was plus or minus 0.00155. And we are reading about 0 0.0003 off. So we're well in tolerance. Um, yeah. In the AC mode, we'll go to AC. I'll just throw the switch on the DMM, -M, the AC, and what I don't know is if this is at 400 hertz or at uh, the DMMM, the DMM check plus uh, has two frequencies as a, configured the way I bought it. Let me um, see which one it's at. Okay, it's at 400, so that's good. So we'll go back to the AC volts. So it's reading uh, the the standard is 4.999 uh, volts, um, and we're reading 4.9975. So we're we're reading roughly about 20. Yes, and so the tolerance on the AC was 0.02. Uh, the meter has to be plus minus 0.02, and so we're well within 0.02 uh, of the frequency. Now, uh, what we're going to do now is look at the uh, vacuum tube voltmeter, and this is going to be a little tricky uh, because the vacuum tube voltmeter does not like square waves. Um, it is made specifically for sine waves. So let me hook it up and um, it probably won't read very accurately. And putting a 600 ohm load on might make it a little better from the 10 volt range. Oh, there we go. And zoom in here where we we're at yeah so here you can see that it's it's not reading five volts it's reading in fact it's reading out of tolerance um, because it doesn't like square waves and even putting the 600 ohm load on will help it a little bit but 
basically the problem is this puts out a square wave. So what I do to um, kind of compensate for that is I will um, put this back on. Let me measure that output. Um, so that's 4.99, call it 80. And now let me put in a sine wave of that same amplitude in the hair. frequency 400 Hertz okay we're going to turn the output the output on AC uh, output is on and we want um, amplitude we're going to crank up the amplitude to get 4.998 volts Oh, yeah, that's too far. probably as close as we're going to get. Anyway, so now we can hook that directly into the vacuum tube voltmeter and lo and behold it reads 5 volts right on. So. Um, that's the issue, this, the vacuum tube voltmeter is designed for true AC signals or sine waves. It just does not like uh, an AC replicated with a square wave. So, uh, well that's it. Uh, that's all really we, that matters, you know. Um, so both, the, both meters check out good. Um, the uh, if you need to measure the frequency, uh, it doesn't almost any decent counter either. I mean, the counter built into the meter would be accurate enough. Um, the the counter built into the uh, waveform generator would be accurate enough, and probably even the counter built into the the oscilloscope would be accurate enough. The counter that's built into this uh, signal generator has an uncertain year plus or minus 25 parts per million, which uh, if you're measuring a you know a 10k signal, that's that's basically 10k. I mean, it's 25 parts per million, so. That's out their ways. But uh, what I do to make my counter even better than that is I use an external source. I use a source that uh, comes off a GPS disciplined oven crystal oscillator, and uh, which is super accurate and super stable, and just to give you an idea. We're running uh, about one part per billion are um, the standard deviation that is me the counter is measuring up from the GPS oscillator is about 86 micro percent, 86 um, millionths of a percent, or one part per billion anyway. So that's a uh, that greatly. Uh, 
improves the accuracy of the counter if you have a counter that you can put an external reference into. Uh, well, that's it, and that's how I check out my equipment. Um, again, uh, the DMM Check Plus does not replace. You can't do a full calibration with it, but you can at least check out uh, a single point, and if it's a point that you, you happen to need, then that's even better. But it gives you a good warm, fuzzy feeling um, that if that's good, then other readings would be good too. Um, well, uh, that's all for now. Um, take care. I hope this helps. And again, if you have any questions about what I did, then uh, just leave them in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, give me a thumbs up. That always helps. And um, that's it for now. Uh, take care and bye for now. Oh, as always, the best way to keep your vintage audio equipment working is to use it regularly. Take care.